Big power in the palm of your hands? That's right, friends. The Fossey Audio Pro Series. Let's find out how it performs. These mini home audio amplifiers have always been very popular on my channel, probably due to their flexibility and how they can be used. Today we're going to take a look at a new amp from Fosi Audio, the BT-20A Pro Series. Now we didn't look at the original series, I just never tested that one, but Fosi Audio contacted me and said, hey, we want to send you this amp out and have you take a look at it. And of course I said, that's fine as long as there are no restrictions as far as my review and this is fully my review, so let's take a look and see what's in the box. You can see we have the power supply here, the Bluetooth antenna. Now this one did come with the larger power supply, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. 48 volt, 5 amp. However, it is not currently available at this time because they haven't entered the Amazon warehouse, but check a link in the video description. When these are available, I will have it linked below. Uh, here's the amp, and here's the one that will be included as far as the power supply. This is a 32 volt 5 amp power supply. This is the one that comes with the amp, 160 watts total. So that's the one you should expect when you purchase this amplifier. Taking a closer look here at the cosmetics, it looks pretty nice. It does have a copper colored volume. It does have some nice controls on the back. It is fully aluminum encased. Feels very high quality. It has a nice switch there to turn on the power. Let's see what is included here. On the far left is the power toggle switch. Then we have the bass and treble controls. Too bad the silk screen's on the bottom. It's hard to see that. We have the volume on the right also, which controls the Bluetooth connection. The back of the amplifier is very simple. Not a whole lot going on here, but it does have one feature that some of the mini amps don't have, which we'll get to here in a second. Preamp output, 3.5 millimeter full range. We also have RCA inputs and Tiffany does not approve. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. It does include the binding post for the speaker outputs, which you can use bare wire up to around 16 gauge, or you can use your favorite banana plug, but you can't use the dual size because they will not fit because some of the power plugs in some countries use the same size. There's also a Bluetooth antenna. Over there on the right, you do screw in the little antenna that comes with it and the power input for 24 to 48 volts. Stay tuned to later in the video, we'll open it up and see what it looks like inside. As far as dimensions go, 4.2 inches for the width, 1.6 inches for the height, 6.8 inches on the depth. Now this depth does include all the knobs as well as the binding posts on the back. Here's a comparison of the power supplies and the unit itself. You can see that large power supply is almost as big as the amplifier, but we're gonna show later the difference between using both as we're gonna do power output for both. As far as the features go, it does use the TPA3255 chip. It does have replaceable op amps, which is very cool. Bluetooth 5.0 has some high-end capacitors and some other things that look pretty nice. You can pause it if you want to see that. Compared to the non-pro model, the pro model has more power, has a preamp output, as well as lower total harmonic distortion. Now, they did not include a power chart like we saw here in this previous test with the IEMA. So we're going to kind of go by this power chart to kind of estimate what we're going to get with this amp since it also used the 3255 Texas Instruments chip. Now, before we fire up the dyno, make sure you smash a like Subscribe to my channel if you want, because there's more things like this coming all the time. If you've never seen these dyno tests on the left, you'll see the RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, you'll see the voltage of the dyno, which we can ignore for this test because the dyno is using its own power source. Now, there are three different tests that we're going to show off. First, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. The certified test tests us up to 1% distortion. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. The dynamic test simulates the IHF202 standard for dynamic power. This here's my favorite part. For the first test here, we're going to be using the smaller power supply. Eight ohms here. We've got both channels loaded down. We're testing at one kilohertz. Again, certified test takes us up to 1% distortion. Let's we'll see what we get here. 40 and 37. So a little bit less than the 65 that we estimated. Let's try it uncertified up to the clipping point. See if we get any better than that 40 and 37. A little bit more, not much. 45 and 41 watts. Now the channel discrepancy you see there is not enough to worry about. Dynamic test sends a pulse tone into the amp. 
It does have a little bit more dynamic power, but again, you probably will never hear that. 52 and 51 watts. Now let's try the four ohm test. There's no ratings provided. We'll assume around 78 watts per channel based on what IEMA gives with their amp. You can also see we've got the O-scope added in here so you can get a little extra. And 71 and 68 at four ohms. Now we're gonna add the larger power supply which this is, again, the 48 volt five amp. Check the link in the video description, see if those are available. No ratings are provided, we'll assume 120 watts per channel. Certified test first, 1% distortion. You can watch the waveform as it fills up the screen there. And there you go, 106 and 103. Not too bad from this mini amp. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point, see if we can need more power. We're gonna assume it's gonna be pretty close. Let's see if our assumptions are right. Yes, 106 and 104. We reset it here for the dynamic track, test out the dynamic capability of the amp and the power supply. 115, nope, 118 and 115. Now the final test here will be four ohm stereo using the big power supply. We'll assume 150 watts times two. Again, they don't say anything but the max power, which is 300 by two, which we'll never see with this particular amplifier. There you go, 168 and 163. Quite a lot of power here from this tiny amplifier. Uncertified up to the clipping point. I bet we're gonna get about the same. Drum roll please. 170, nope, it jumped. See that, 192, 187, but it did jump because the amp actually shut off and came right back on. That's why you saw that jump in power. Dynamic. 211 and 207. Yo, nope, 211 and 209. So that's good dynamic power. That's over 420 watts. Here are the results. If you want to see with the small power supply here and the larger power supply, definitely will pay off for you to get the larger power supply when it's available um, if you really need the extra power for this amp. Now I can hear the people already saying, how is it possible that with a 240 watt amplifier, you're getting 420 watts of output. Well, I've shown this before and I will leave the link in the video description to the previous video where I explained this. Basically, these power supplies will put out more power than they're rated for short periods, which is what the dyno test is just that short period. Next up, we're gonna check the preamp output, the voltage RMS, as well as the distortion. Here on the distortion meter, you can see the lights there. We are testing one kilohertz. Voltage scale is from zero to 10 volts. The distortion scale is from zero to 0.1% THD. And I'm gonna switch that here in a second, you will see. So right at one volt, we could not really read the distortion, so I had to set it on the lowest setting, which is 0.1. And here you can see how clean this output is at one volt. I estimate it to be around 0.026% total harmonic distortion, which is really clean, extremely clean. So what I did was I turned the volume up to give us two volts of RMS output. Then we're gonna check that distortion it actually went down 0.016% THD. So what about turn up a little bit more to three volts? And yeah, believe it or not, it went down even more. 0.012% THD. Now we're splitting hairs here, talking about how clean this output is, but it is extremely clean. But if we turn it up a little bit more, any more than three volts, you can see that we peg the distortion meter and you don't wanna go that high because you are gonna have some issues with the output. Next up, we're gonna connect a Bluetooth device and find out how it sounds with the ELAC bookshelf speakers. All right, let's flip this on. Check out the Bluetooth connection. Look under other devices down here. There you go, Fosi Audio B220, BT20A Pro, connected. That was quick and easy. Looks like it's connected. Very simple.
Okay, so those speaker tests will not fully portray over YouTube, unfortunately, because of compression and such. But if you use headphones, I think you can tell. Sounds pretty amazing. Of course, I listened to this for a long time. Loud volumes, and I was impressed. It sounded really good. Now let's tear into this amplifier, find out what's inside. Lots of chips and lots of dip. After a few minutes of removing some screws, some knobs, as well as some shaft nuts, we were able to get inside of this mini amplifier. Here you can see the layout of the guts. We're going to talk about it a little more, but first let's take off two screws off the bottom here so we can take off the heat sink. See that TPA3255 chip. We have shown this before in previous videos. This is from Texas Instruments and talks about the um, very clean power output. It is a Class D amplifier. And here's some of the other features. It does have replaceable NE5532 op amps, as well as an Omron relay and a Sumida high power inductors from straight out of Japan. So some nice quality components here. You can also see capacitors, 2200 microfarad, 50 volt, the gold emblem on there. And here are the replaceable op amps you can see. They have uh, eight different legs and these were not easy to get out for me. I have worked with computers before and know how these tiny pins work, so you have to be really careful. They're very fragile, but I was able to get them back even after I bent the pins when I removed them. You might want to be careful removing these if you're going to swap them out. You may know better than me how to do this or check some other videos on YouTube about how to remove these properly. But there is the op amp chip. These can be replaced for it with higher end chips if you want. If you're a real you know, audio snob and think this is not good enough, then you can do that. Now let's talk about pros and cons, things I like, things that could be better. Big power, small size, great sound quality, clean line level output. We showed that before. Over 100 dB signal to noise ratio. They did provide me with some measurements here they did before. Has a binding post, Bluetooth 5.0, bass and treble controls to help with your sound. The op amps are replaceable as I've already shown. Now the other side of the story here, no remote, no headphone jack. It does need the expensive power supply to get the good power output. No USB for high resolution audio playback. Only one Bluetooth connection at a time. You have to hold down the power button if you want to reset it. There is no frequency provided for the bass and treble. We did not hook up the audio analyzer to see what that was. Amazon review debacle. What are we talking about here? Well, if you look at the amp before it's even listed, it shows 472 ratings, almost five stars, which is a little shady which means they probably replaced an old product with this one so they could keep the reviews. Well, that sure don't make much sense, does it? Well, irregardless, the amp performed well. I really like it. This is the Fosi Audio BT20A Pro, and they did send it to me again, but there were no restrictions as far as the review because I don't allow that. So I pretty much gave you everything I thought about it. I showed you all the measurements that I could physically do, and in the end, the amp performed well. It just needs a remote a few other little things, but if you use it with a PC or use it with a small 2.1 system, then I think it's a great little amp. It has plenty of power, and it sounds great. So, appreciate you guys watching as always. Big D, I'm out of here. All right, I'm only testing this at 2 ohms because they said it's stable at 2 ohms. So, let's try 2 ohms certified. 1% distortion with the large power supply. Amp is definitely getting a little bit warm. Okay. So the amp doesn't really like two ohm loads all that much, which is not a shock. So uh, we're not gonna push it too hard because I need to try the other speaker tests and stuff first to, um, yeah, make sure we're good.